This Week on Kentucky Field, Swamp Rabbits and Cottontails. Good job, good job. That's a big rabbit. The dogs are running them both on this exciting trip to Western Kentucky. Next, who doesn't love good jerky? We'll show you Chad's favorite recipe and how to make it. Exactly how I remember. <laughs> <Is> it? <laughs> then, we jump in the boat with a pro and wear out some Green River crappie. That is what pulls me into crappie fishing. It's all next on Kentucky You Feel. Yeah, we got one. Sweet. Got a muskrat? Yeah. Good job. <laughs> what do you know about that, man? That's a good fish, man. Nice male, small mouth. Healthy, pretty color. Cody, here. Find us one more good pheasant, Cody. As biologists, we, we catch ducks and we place bands on them. And it's just a really excellent place to see cottonmouths. What do you think? Like bull. That was pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to Kentucky Afield. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. I've been rabbit hunting in Kentucky for over 30 years, but hunting swamp rabbits, this was a first. This area that we're hunting right here, what uh, what type of rabbits are we? Do we think we're going to be after here? Oh, we're we're going to be after swampers in here in this in this block of woods. It holds a pretty good population. It's it's uh it's kind of like an island out here where we're at, but uh, it does hold some swampers. It's got the the cane breaks in it that you like to see. And it's got the uh, the bottom one hardwood type system that we like to find swampers in. So I've never I've never hunted for swamp rabbits, not knowingly anyway. You're saying they'll go out much further than a regular cottontail. They'll take a big run. You know, everything with a swamper is is two times a cottontail. So they're they're twice as big, they're twice as fast, twice as smart, and 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 they'll run twice as hard. So for any swampers we kill, you're going to carry them, right? <laughs> a, tre a, tree may, a tree may hold them for a while. You don't want to carry four. Uh, you don't I'm, want to I'm carry guessing four. not, yeah. What's your dog's name? Uh, the big one's Jugs, and the little one's Minnie, and Tango, and Lady on the end. She's my, he's my oldest dog, and she's second oldest. Okay. Then the two youngest ones aren't but about nine months old. So, if a person wanted to pursue swamp rabbits, where do they kind of need to go to get into that type of habitat? They need to be in West Kentucky, west of the Natural Parkway. So we're in Ohio County right now, and we're on the very eastern end of their range. That didn't take very long. That sounds pretty promising. Here it goes. Going this way. Yeah, Rabbit just crossed the road right behind us going that way. Come here, girl. Come here. Look here. Hey, boy. Good job. Good job. That's a big rabbit. Good job. Good job. That's a big one. Nice job. Now, so other than the characteristics of this overall size, is there anything else on a swamp rabbit that identifies it as a swamp rabbit versus the... Uh... I most of the time look at the head. Okay. They can, get, they're gonna get bigger. But like he said, the head, they got a fatter head and relatively speaking, their ears are a little bit smaller compared yeah, to look a... they small compared to that to head. Yeah. The cinnamon right there around the eye, mm -hmm. sometimes it'll be a little bit more reddish and a, a cottontail will be a little bit more whitish or tannish. They get a little bit bigger. This ain't quite as big as the ones we killed the last time, but it's bigger than a, you can tell it's bigger, bigger than a normal cottontail. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they'll get a little bit bigger. We, we actually saw that rabbit cross the road up here and yeah. the dogs, a couple seconds later, were right on it. And uh, man, they were hot on the trail then. Sitting right in front of me, you see it? 
That's the sneak I was talking about. Yeah. I bet that's the same rabbit. Think so? Probably. Well, I hope it's the same rabbit because uh, we're here to work the dogs for the most part. And the way it was slipping through, it, it, it looked like it had been chased and was just kind of out. And you, you never know because they work so far in front of the dog that, I mean, a few hundred yards is nothing. Got that cinnamon ring. Yep. Big, big head, small ears. Yep. I believe this is a... Uh, Another little small A swamp rabbit. It's, it's, a, a, it's a smaller it's one a on the small, small end. But yeah. yeah, it's a swamper. So we've jumped two rabbits, two swampers. Look for them, look for them, look for them, look for them. Rabbit in here, look for them, look for them, look for them. Look for them, girl, look for them, look for them, look for them. Here he comes, here he comes. Take it. Nice job. I think that was a cottontail, wasn't it? I think so, yeah. <laughs> Dead. Don't eat it, please. <laughs> dead. Good, dead. Oh, we got one down over there, too. A little cotton tail. Yep, look how skinny the face is. Yeah. It's a nice rabbit. It's a good sized cotton tail. Oh, that's a big that's rabbit. That's a big right? rabbit. Nice job. That's probably definitely a swamp rabbit. Yeah, it's making a big old long path. Yeah. Scott, where'd they first jump that rabbit? Way back over in there. Oh, okay. I've been running this thing for 30 minutes or so. Right, right, right. right. Dang it. Must've been a big rabbit. <laughs> Took three shots three to bring shots. that one down. <laughs> Hopefully. I said those dogs are facing toward us and coming this way. I thought that rabbit ought to pop out any time now. Yeah, it, but man, he took a huge loop. Man, huge. that was a, that was a heck of a run. I'm interested to see this rabbit. Well, if they got it, you. Three, three shots, not a good sign. There he goes. Got him that time. He come, he come around on the back side, and then I had to move with you and kind of be moving with him. Gosh, that's not a big rabbit. I'll buy you lunch. <laughs> that sucker ran a mile. I'm gonna let them run it up to him. They worked for that one. They did. Now, this is a really good example of the difference in the size of these two rabbit species. Here you got a swamper, and that's a pretty good size one, but they get bigger than that even, don't they? Yeah, a little bit. And this is a really average size Absolutely. cottontail. Mm -hmm. So by the looks of this, it must be a pretty good shot because yours is a whole lot smaller. <laughs> that's a tougher target. It took, me, it took me quite a few tries to get him if you heard. Yeah, but uh, I'll tell you what, that, this was one of the more impressive runs I think I've ever heard. Those dogs ran that thing, what, a mile maybe? I'd say, I'd say. So there really is a big difference in the size of these rabbits. Scott, hand me one of each here if you don't mind. The difference is tremendous. Yeah. And the crazy thing is, is that uh, some of the characteristics of the way that they, they behave. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> go get that. Oh my goodness. That was amazing. So I'm not sure which one of these this was, but it was, uh, I think it was a cottontail. But it's amazing is how th these animals will take to water to av to avoid predators. Yes, yeah. We didn't see that today because it's been kind of dry. But uh, it absolutely is amazing that uh, that these rabbits how how differently they act. Yeah. But uh, it's crazy. We come out here, we sit sit down for two seconds right here by the truck, and one comes shooting out under our legs. <laughs> no guns loaded. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good, good end of the day. That that rabbit will get to live to to do that again someday. For all you hunters out there that had a great deer season and you have a little extra meat in the freezer, maybe you should consider this. So today I'm back in my hometown of Mount Washington and I'm here with Sandy Lentz. And Sandy, about 30 years ago, you made some deer jerky for me that changed my way of thinking about deer jerky. A lot of, it was very unique in a lot of ways. And uh, today we're gonna make that deer jerky. 
and I bet it'll be just as good as it was 30 years ago. Well, I hope. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your uh, the jerky that you make, and um, there's one thing that's really unique about it, and that is how you actually dry it. Well, I dry it in my oven. You dry it in the oven? Dry it in the oven, uh-huh. Don't have a dehydrator, and um, I think it's quicker, yeah. really, to me. You also have a recipe that you uh, make your marinade out of that is really smoky, and it's salty, and uh, it's just, it's got a really, it's got a lot of flavor. It's really, really good. And I want you to show me how that I can, how I can make that in my house. <laughs> okay, it's not hard. It's not hard at all. It takes about 15 ingredients. Okay. Mix them all up and put your meat in there and marinate it for 24 hours. What type of cuts do you like to use? I use shoulders, roasts, mm -hmm. um, tenderloin, mm -hmm. steak even. I can, okay. You know, anything you can cut in strips like three to four inches long and about an inch wide. You've already done some steps here. You've taken some shoulder and some back strap and, uh, and you've cut this deer up in, into strips, right? Mm -hmm. So once you get this all cut up, what do you got here, a couple pounds? Probably three, Yes, and three that's pounds. what the recipe calls for is two pounds. Two pounds, mm -hmm. okay. So once you get your meat all cut and, uh, and it's in quarter inch strips, what's the next process? Okay, the next is I mix up my batch of uh, marinade. Okay, you wanna, do, let's do that. Okay. I use this little recipe that you remember. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen this recipe before. <laughs> so we're going to use a teaspoon and a half of the salt. All right. Teaspoon and a half of salt. And I usually do the dry ingredients first. Onion salt is one teaspoon. Now we need garlic salt. And that calls for a teaspoon also. Quarter of a teaspoon of black pepper. Got to have all the peppers in there. If you like it your... calls for a lot of pepper. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, a quarter of red pepper. Now we need one teaspoon of white pepper. There you go. Okay. A half a teaspoon of meat tenderizer. One teaspoon of celery salt, yep. Now we're gonna move to the uh, wet ingredients, which is starts with lemon juice. One teaspoon of lemon juice. One teaspoon of, there it is, kitchen bouquet, kitchen bouquet. whatever that is. <laughs> she didn't know what it was. <laughs> But I think that gives it a lot of that dark. Now, a third of a cup of water. All right, a third of a cup of barbecue sauce. All right. That's about right. Now I gotta go on the spoon. Yeah, that's not gonna want to come out of there real quick, is it? <laughs> okay. Now, a third of a cup of Worcestershire sauce. It seems like a lot, doesn't it? You know what though? We're gonna soak a lot of meat in here. Two pounds already sliced up. Tastes quite a bit. We need a third of a cup of soy sauce. And I think there's one left. And now we just need the liquid smoke. Okay. Yeah. It already smells like jerky. As soon yeah, as you crack the lid exactly of this, right, it, it says, it? man, it, this is jerky. So. All right, now once you get that done, you're gonna mix this all up really good. Make sure it's mixed up good. So you just start laying that in and mixing it in there. Get my bigger ones first if I can, you know, because it cooks more evenly if you've got them all the same size. So uh, I know you really like jerky and your family really likes to eat jerky. You've been making mm -hmm. this for a long, long time. But something you haven't been doing for a long, long time is hunting, but this is your deer, isn't it? This is my deer, that's exactly right. My so first deer. You, your first deer, you started deer hunting last year, right? I did. <laughs> all right, I think that's about two pounds, and that's really all you need. I can just make more when Make more later on, okay. So once you get this all mixed up in there and it's completely coated, now what do you do? Well, I'm gonna put a lid on it, and it's gonna go in the refrigerator for 24 hours. Okay. And every now and then I go in there and shake it or stir it up. Okay. And um, that's all it is till uh, you wait your 24 hours, and then you start hanging it and drying it. Well, let's get it in the refrigerator. All right. All right, so you already have some that has been marinating for 24 hours, right? I do. This All was right. Well, let's yesterday. take this over here and we'll look at the next step here. So the next thing you do is you're going to squeeze some of this excess juice out of it because okay. you don't want it dripping in your oven okay. <laughs> um, too much. I mean, it's going to drip some, but I just well, take once it, it and drips these off are very long, so, so you just squeeze them out. All right. And you're just squeezing the excess marinade off. Mm-hmm. And lay that out in strips. Now all our meat has been squeezed off, we've got the excess marinade off. We're ready to go to the oven. 
Right. And you got a little something you do to prep the oven for this as well, right? I do. I usually put uh, wax paper down because it's going to drip as you're hanging. Okay. Well, I'll get the meat and we'll start getting the oven ready. The strips right here where I know I won't have to. All right, next step, Chad, is I just run a toothpick down about an inch or so because I don't want it to slide up. I do my longest strips at the back. Okay. And you don't want your meat touching the racks. So and you don't want any meat touching each other and none touching the rack. So you just you're literally just using a, a toothpick to suspend this meat exactly. on the rack. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now shorter ones I usually do in the front because they're gonna get done first. That's all there is to it. So now once you get that in there and hung and ready to go. I'm going to prop you just it open. Stuck that little spoon in there to keep it from closing. So you've got some airflow here. Right. Okay. And um, we're gonna turn it on and the lowest setting you can turn it on. Mine's only goes to 175. Alright. Alright. If you have an oven that'll go to 165 or one if you can go lower, yes. Yeah, okay. But uh, now I've been doing it on 175 and then four to five hours it's pretty good. Well, Sandy, it's been right at five hours now. What do you think? I think we could check it and see what we got. It looks like it's getting done. Here, I'll get this pan out here. All righty. Well, I'm going to start pulling them out then, Chad. All right. Man, they smell, they smell fantastic. It's uh, hard to pull the rack out because you're going to be done with that now. And so, you, as you can tell, it, it's a little bit brittle, but it's done all the way through. All right, and then the only thing yeah, I have to do is just remove those toothpicks and... Well, get your bowl over here and we'll start taking toothpicks out. All righty, we'll get her finished. There we go. All right, first batch is ahead. done there. Now, think it's ready to try? Go ahead. I'm going to give it a little <laughs> piece here. Want to try a piece? All righty. It looks great. Exactly how I remember. <laughs> I can't That's wait. Good. I can't wait to put some in a baggie on my next fishing trip. I highly recommend giving this a try. You don't need to have a dehydrator. You can do it right there in the oven, and uh, it makes great jerky. Thank I'm you. Glad you enjoyed it. Pre well, you're welcome. <laughs> now let's check in and see who's catching what and where in this week's fishing report. This is Rob Roll in the Northwestern Fishery District. Both of our major reservoirs, Rough River Lake and Nolan River Lake, along with all of our smaller impoundments, have been, for the most part, completely frozen over the last couple of weeks or so. About the only open water we've had is the Ohio River and Green River. And although the temperatures have been bitter, a few people have braved those to fish for sauger. And anglers are picking up a few sauger below the dams at Candleton, Newburgh, and Uniontown. Fins Lakes, anglers are still catching a few of the November stock trout there. So this time of year, since it's too cold to get out much and fish, uh, it's a good time of year to do maintenance on your gear. Remember, be safe out this time of year. Hypothermia can set in very quickly. This is Justin with your fishing report from the Northeast. As we begin to thaw out from the last few weeks in a deep freeze, sauger and walleye fishing are always a good bet on the Ohio this time of year. Below Green Up and Melt All Lock and Dam is a great spot to focus. Also, the mouths of tributaries coming in. Try casting silver buddies, crankbaits, and curly tail jigs. The tailwater of Cave Run is free of ice and offers a good chance at crappie in the slack water and the mouths of creeks coming in. Minnows are always a good choice in this cold weather. Remember to fish much slower than you would in warmer months. There's also the added bonus of a chance at a trout or a walleye in the tailwaters. That should do it for us in the Northeast. If you get out, let someone know where you're going and when you're going to get back. Good luck and be safe. This is Adam Martin with the Western District Fishing Report. Our creel survey results for 2017 indicated that over half of the crappie caught in Kentucky Lake were right at nine inches. The vast majority of these fish will be over the 10 inch size limit so we are expecting another incredible year of crappie fishing in both lakes. Your best chance to catch them now will be in 15 to 30 feet of water with some fish moving shallower on your sunny days. This time of year is also a great time to try snagging below Kentucky Dam. From January 1st to May 31st snagging is allowed 24 hours a day below Kentucky Dam. You'll need a heavy action rod with at least 80 pound test monofilament rigged with a 9 aught or 10 aught treble hook and at least an 8 ounce weight. If you think a smallmouth fights hard, try hooking a 30 pound silver carp with a snagging rod. Remember to stay warm out there, good luck, and good fishing. Many lakes around Kentucky have had a great season for catching crappie, 
and winter is just the time to catch them. I'm going to learn a ton from you today because it's really been a while since uh, I've went out and located crappie and targeted crappie like this. Yeah, and we're kind of, th this is a real life scenario. We come down here today expecting mm -hmm. to fish something we fished earlier in the week and, uh, and caught fish on. Um, the water conditions were not ideal for that. It had turned muddy on us in the last couple of days and now we're just, uh, we're on a search to find fish. <laughs> Chad, what's been really the best color uh, for us in the last few trips that we've made has been this green and chartreuse. It's, okay. a, uh, it's a little jig made by Crappie Magnet. Leland's Lures produces this. Um, this jig head is called a double cross jig head and you'll see it's got barbs mm -hmm. offset on both okay. sides. I just kind of thread that up there uh, on the jig. You'll see the hook comes out mm -hmm. uh, between the legs. And then I tie that on. Right. Um, this little product here, uh, we use a lot of these. It's a power bait, Berkeley power bait, crappie nibble. And uh, I'll just place that on there. And um, that's what we use. Look at that. That's the way to start it out. Right there. Nice little Green River crappie. Pushing nine and a half, probably. All it's right. a keeper on Green River. Now let's, let's talk about the size and uh, krill limits here on Green River. Okay. Uh, Green River Lake is a nine inch size limit and uh, 30 per person, 60 okay. possession. A little over 10 inches. A little over 10. 10 and a quarter. There now, that's good fish. Yeah. Oh wow, that is the best one of the day right there. He'll go, he'll go 11, maybe 11 and a quarter. Pretty fish. That's a go fish right that there. fish hit really aggressive. Don't take many that size to make a sandwich or a fish taco, does it? What was it about crappie that just kind of pulled you in? That right there. Chad. Yeah. That, 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 that Man, is that's what, a good one, too. That is what pulls me into crappie fishing. Look at there. This is a good one. Come out of that brush. I ain't as big as I thought. Heavy hung in a limb, but uh, he's going to be close. You know better than me. Is that going to make it? I think he's going to be a little shy, maybe a, little a quarter, shy. quarter inch. I'll just take you away. Yeah. There's a good fish. Oh, that's a good fish here. Yeah. That's a good crappie right there. Pretty good fish there. We may get 11 inches there. We'll see. 11 inches on the number. Crappie fishing in Green River right in the middle of January. Hopefully we get a mess of fish here. We've already probably already done that. And man, this sure beats being at home on the couch. There we go. There we go, good fish. That's a nice one. Pretty fish, Chad. The, the iridescence of the purples and blues in their back, it's just so pretty. What a bite. Now that's a good one. That's a good fish right there. Got that yellow on him. That's a pretty fish mm -hmm. right there. I believe they're starting to starting to feed up pretty good. That's where it's at. This fish will tell you where it's at, won't yeah. they? They'll tell you where the brush is. <laughs> Chad, I really uh, enjoy this time of year to get out. You know, it's uh, fun to catch them any time of year, but uh, when you catch them in the wintertime, it just seems like such a bonus. Oh, it definitely is. Yeah. We've seen one or two boats all day. The, the conditions could not have been more enjoyable. I would rather put on one layer of thermals and a heavy jacket come out and fish and be really, really comfortable to come out here wearing shorts and a t-shirt and flip-flops and sweating the whole yeah, time. Yeah, and burning that. And the fishing's better. Yeah. <laughs> Now let's see who else is out there having fun as we check out this week's ones that didn't get away. Three-year-old Elijah White is really proud of his first fish, a nice bluegill taken from a farm pond in Henry County. 
Check out this really nice largemouth bass caught by David Hunt. Said he watches Kentucky Field every single week. Thanks, David. Here's a nice buck taken by Dylan King of Corbin, Kentucky. It's a nice eight point buck that he took while hunting in Bath County. For all of you archery hunters out there, this is your last weekend to get in the woods as deer and turkey season go out on January the 15th. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Till next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water.